Hi, my name is Miles Eddy. I'm uh, operating as a heartfelt production and uh, I'm telling my story, a, an optimist path through cynicism. And a lot of that path has brought me to an organization, a nonprofit grassroots movement called Braver Angels. And um, I'm quite involved with that. And I want to show you today how I'm using Eventbrite and uh, using it to be able to help schedule workshops for uh, for Braver Angels. If you are looking at this and you're with Braver Angels, you might want to check the Braver Angels website because there might be an updated version of some of this. This is all in progress and uh, we've got a team of people kind of helping people out and trying to do this. So it should be noted that this is all how Eventbrite looks as of July 21st, 2020. Um, they change things all the time. And I want to show you basically how um, I'm going to take one of my previous events and replicate it to create a new event um, and go through all the different elements. Now, if you don't have a previous event that you're copying, that's okay. Then you just want to go up and uh, use the create event button there. Uh, another nice useful thing to know is that if you have a draft of an event and you want to say, well, wait a minute, I want to make a copy of that event before and edit that, but you have something else in here. It's like, where do you get to your old events? Event status past right there. All right. And, uh, so there's my past. If I click into one of these guys, this is, uh, the one that I made a copy of, you can, you know, copy the event and it will then end up into your drafts over here, which is what we're editing now. So I've just labeled it the name of the workshop, Depolarize in Indiana, and then the date. So this was made as a copy, but the new date is going to be August 15. And uh, I like putting that in the date because I also have this linked up with MailChimp and uh, it will create an event, a tag in MailChimp when people sign up here. So the summary here is the same that uh, I used last time, so I don't need to change that. And the event starts on August 15, which is a Saturday. And the last event started at 12.30, but we're gonna do this one starting at noon. And of course, it's gonna end on the same day. The event is two hours long, copy event. All right, so now if I come over and I click the basic information here. So tags are useful when we have people using Eventbrite to find events in their area, something to do. Um, your organization might have some tags that they actually want you to use. The organizer is going to be really just what you created the account with. So when you created the account, uh, the organizer of the events will be that. Now, in the case of Braver Angels, um, for the local alliance a while back, I created a separate account for Braver Angels Indiana. So braverangelsindiana.org is our local alliance and uh, what we're using for just Indiana. Right now, Braver Angels is actually uh, providing these tools nationwide for people. So you might not need to uh, set up your own event bright account. You could probably do this through the national event bright site, meaning the, organizi the organizer would probably just say braver angels. If this is an online workshop, then just click that. The date and time, this is a single event. And when I copied it, I put the correct date and time in there. So we're good. So we'll go save and move down to details. So clicking on details, now, for the description of the event, the summary is the same as I used last time, and it gave us an option to change that when I copied the event. And then the description of the event here, if this is a public event that's visible on Eventbrite, then you might want to put a little bit more detail in here. I know some people on this, this is called a, a hybrid event, so there's some there's some online uh, self-study that they need to do beforehand. Some people put the URL for that and just kind of give them a heads up and give them the information there. It, when I set this up, I, I have it so that once they register in the initial email, all of that information, the links for the self-study uh, and all the other basic information that they need. In this description, you can add another text box and images and embed a video and, and you know, kind of make this event page a little bit fancier here. I'm going to keep it real simple and just leave it at that. Um, so now the online event page. Now this is the page that they can go to um, 
when after they register and get uh, more information about the event. What I've done with this is, is I'm using the live streaming and then I'm going to my Zoom and this guy right here is the event for August 15th. And I'm coming down here and then I'm right clicking on the link, copy link address, go back to event bright. And then in the live stream link, I am putting that Zoom thing in there. I have a little cheat sheet here. So this guy right here is just my little own, own little database thing here. And there's the summary that we've already saw. There's the description. Um, and then live stream title and the link and the description. And because it did not copy this when I copied the event. Like I said, I like having this in a separate file because it did not copy that for me. Now this is the description. And again, that did not get copied. This you want to keep really short because the more longer part will come later. Link and just give them some basic instructions. And this information, I'm also emailing them to them. We can add another text box or another image or embed a, a, a video and then links to resources. Now links to resources um, is something I do want to do. Um, give them the link for the self-study homework, right? So that they will have that here too. Now, again, this is all going in the email after them, but it's kind of nice to make it as easy as possible that they're going into Eventbrite to do this and they know Eventbrite or it sends them to this page, then it's good to have that right there in front of them. So again, when I copied this event, it did not copy all of this for me. And that's why I, I need to put all of this back in again. It would be nice if they did that and just let me edit it, but for some reason they don't. And now I want a text box. So this is the text that, that I wrote before, updated for the new registration. And that goes down to here. So we'll copy that in. And now I want to come down here and say add text. So we add text and now I can just cut and paste this in here. Now it doesn't let me add it as HTML with all the, the formatting in it. Um, so there's a little bit of cleaning up I have to do here. First of all, I don't like the extra returns there. So I just get rid of all the extra crap in between. Um, this one I actually like to keep after the, so I want to make these links live. Um, to do that, what I need to do is come in here and copy the whole link. Be careful not to get the period at the end of my sentence there. And then to make that a link, that's what this little box right here is for. So it says add link, save it, and now we get the blue background and underlining, and that is now a hot link. Um, so I'm gonna go down here and just do that for the rest of these guys. So it's really important to have a copy of all of this stuff and be able to cut and paste it into there. Now, I was cutting from uh, just regular text into that text box. If I was cutting from a Word document, it might let me do the links, now, if you actually didn't want to just spell out the URL, because some people like to just say then by clicking and then go here, you could just say here, and then I already copied that into the clipboard and go back up to the link, put it in there, save, and now it says by clicking here, and then when they go here, it'll be the actual link. One of the recommendations with Brave Angels is to not actually include the Zoom link itself until a couple days before the event. Um, personally, on this particular event, um, this copy of it, I probably am going to make public, but the previous ones were not public. So I just wanted to make it as easy as possible for them to be able to get to the event itself. But they're not going to see this, uh, this online event page until after they register. So now we've got the text. Now, I, like I said, we've got two link resources. Um, so again, like I said, it's always good to create a copy of stuff. So the two links I want to put on this um, online event page, the first one is titled self-training to be completed before August 15 workshop. 
and it's given the actual URL for that, again, including the HTTP colon, uh, S colon slash slash, and there it is, and save. And now I want to actually add another one, so that's the self-training they do before, and then again, personally, just preference on my part, I wanted to actually give them the URL for the Zoom meeting itself. And just want to make sure that matches up with everything else. And save. All right, so now if we want to check out what it looks like, I can hit preview. So you want to go check everything on this page, meaning we want to go preview this and then check all the links. That's really super important. All right, so uh, we have our text box. We've got a couple uh, linked resources, uh, one for the self-study training, uh, the other, which is the link to the actual Zoom meeting itself. Remember, they're not gonna be able to see this until they actually register. Um, and, and then we save and preview. So on our preview, uh, this part right here is what that actual, um, uh, the, the top part here that we had, the live stream link, is what is going to be right here. So it looks like a little video play, and if I click on it, um, it's going to ask me to fire up Zoom, all right, which at the time of the event is exactly what we want to do. And then next we have uh, the text box. And you want to go through and you want to check all of these check all of these links. So um, by clicking here, that was the link to Zoom. So we know that's working. And just systematically go down the Braver Angels participant guide. So yep, that link's working great. All right, um, come down, check the cheat sheet for Zoom. And yep, there's that. So uh, keep in mind that this could be updated from time to time. So that might be a little different than what you're seeing there. And then the self-training course to be completed. Um, this was in the text too. I made the link hot in the text and it takes us to the same place for the, on, for the training beforehand. And then down here and we click here. And again, it's gonna ask us to go up for the meeting. So next we have tickets and there's two places that you need to go in and, and check. Okay, so it's really super important here and I, I, I'm going to jump ahead on some of these other things I'll go over with in a moment with you, but it's really super, super important that you make sure that the event is, is registered as a registration event and not as a ticketed event. So to do that, you want to jump down to order options and event type and language. And here we have the event type. So you want to make sure that this is as a registration event. And then almost always the language of course will be will be English. Um, so save that as a registered event. And if you made a copy of this, this will copy on over with the previous information. Um, the other thing I want to point out right now under order options is under order confirmation. And again, we're gonna talk about the custom email in a second here, but you wanna make sure that printable tickets, include a printable ticket in all orders, is turned off, again, for the similar reason. So if you get those two options on there, it generates a lot less clutter in the emails that they get from Eventbrite that's tacked on above and beyond your own stuff, okay. So in my case, this was copied from a, a previous event. So um, normally, if, the, if you were creating this anew, it would you just go create ticket right here. And um, you can have multiple ticket types, like they can have a registration event or a physical ticket. But in the, this case, you just want to have one ticket type. So the dot, dot, dot over here will allow me to edit. This is a free event. And on the name, again, uh, next time I want to allow up to 60 people. So you can just make that whatever you want. Um, the start date is not the start date of the event. It's the start date of when they can start ordering this ticket. And we want to let them start ordering this ticket not on August 4th. We want to let them start ordering right away. 
we want to end ticket sales just before the event. Now, there's a self-training. You might want to actually make this a little bit beforehand, like the two hours beforehand or something, because they need to take 50 minutes to actually go through the training. After it starts, they won't be able to get this ticket anymore. So we go save and uh, on sale and ends at the time of the event. So now we have the event actually set up. And nice thing about Eventbrite is, is that it can automatically send emails. Now there's first an email that they get right after they register. So even if they register two minutes before the event, continuing on order options here. So we have the order form itself. So when someone says, yes, I want to go to this event, um, it pulls up the order form and there's a bunch of options here. So now, like I said, generally you can only have one ticket type. This was when you go to tickets, this is listed there. And uh, this is, you can say yes or no for collecting this information. And custom checkout questions. So in the case of the Braver Angels Skills Workshop, we need to know if they lean more uh, conservative, Republican, or Democratic, because in the workshop we pair up uh, conservatives, Reds, Republicans with others of the, the same type, so they get to practice with somebody in the same, the same political leaning. And so what I want to do is I want to come down here and say add custom field. So uh, the custom question then becomes, do you lean more conservative Republican, red or liberal Democratic blue? And we want to limit their options to red, blue, and we do let them specify other, but in the workshop itself, uh, it's going to be, we're going to need to know if they are going to be one or the other because we need to know how to pair them up. I'm going to add another custom question and say, what is your zip code? Always ask for the first and the last name and the email address, and those are required. Um, the red or the blue, we can or cannot require, and the zip code we could or could not require, and in this case, there's really no reason not to require them, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, some other registration, options is we can give some additional instructions here which would be when they're actually signing up for the ticket itself and then the message display um, after the sale ends that instead of being able to get a ticket then we could you know say join us next time or put our website there so we'll just leave that blank right now too and then Eventbrite has a bunch of other features, group registration, um, just things that we're not going to need, so we don't need, really need to complicate things and go over that right now. Okay, now the other really, 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 really super important thing here is the order confirmation page. And um, so normally when they register, it just goes, thanks for registering, we'll send you an email. Um, but you can put in... Uh, a, a little more detailed message here. But more importantly, scroll down, custom email. This is the email that gets sent to them after they order their ticket. This is the email where I send them the Zoom link. Again, check with the organization if there's a protocol for that. There are some security issues, but this URL is generally not going to be available to anybody except if they register. So I feel it's minimal and I like to make it as easy as possible for them to be able to get to the actual event. Um, so this was copied from a previous event for my July 19th event. And um, so I am gonna need to edit this, but it's all the same information. Thank you for registering for Brave Angels of Monroe County, et cetera. Um, the, it's not at 12.30, it's at noon and ends at two. And it's Eastern time. The date is August 15. And then this is the Zoom link. Now, this is the wrong link because this is a copy. So this is super important here. I'm gonna stop screen share because this is super important. If you make a copy of this, the email that goes out for the confirmation email is copied along with it. And if you have the Zoom link for this workshop and it's not a reoccurring event, then you need to go edit that link and make sure that you got the correct updated link. 
Now, if this wasn't copied from a previous event, then this won't apply. You'll just be writing this fresh. Um, but I just can't overemphasize being able to go in there and actually edit the URL. So um, if I go back to my meanings, um, make sure I'm on the right one, depolarizing Indiana on August 15th, come over here, right click, copy link address, um, go back to Eventbrite and paste that in there. And then again, it's not gonna make that a hot link. All right, now this particular editor isn't as fancy as some of them. And so it lets me go into HTML, but it doesn't actually have a place for me to make that a hot link. So again, the Zoom ID changed because this was a copy. So get rid of that. Uh, go back over to my meeting ID. Copy this, paste it, and it is actually formatted text. So um, in this case, I'm gonna go to Windows Notepad, get rid of the formatting, put it in there, which actually tells me if I come over here. So here's a little trick about how you can get these to be hot links. Um, I'm gonna copy this link into the clipboard. And I am going to go to Word and copy it into Word, hit space, it makes a hot link out of it, copy it as a hot link, and then come back in here and then paste it and voila, now it's a hot link. The password and double check that, make sure that it's the same password, so I happen to know it is. And then this they need to complete, not by July 19th, but August. So again, if you're making a copy of all of this from a previous event, make sure you go in and edit all this. This is the email they're going to get. Now, this is a, a link that we update and uh, date again, August 15. So this will be attached to the bottom of the email, the, the confirmation email after they register. Um, so continuing, we wanted to make sure we talked about this earlier. Make sure that this is unchecked. This is extremely important. You do not want it to include information about printable tickets because it gets added before your message up here. And so it just really complicates things and it makes it harder to actually find the message you want them to actually see. Um, save settings and that's order configuration. All right, and so we talked about event type earlier so this is always a good one to double check so under event type you just always want to make sure that it's a registrated a registration event and then finally under this section we have waiting list then you can enable the waiting list and uh that way if people uh more than the number of people like in this case 30 or 60 sign up for it they will be able to uh at least give you their information and um, I'm going to check phone number because with this kind of event, usually it's, you know, kind of, kind of a personal event that, that if they're approaching us, they, they might trust us enough to give us their phone number and it's not required. So I'm going to say ask for the phone number because that's just nice information to have, uh, if they choose to give it to us. Okay. So now if the maximum number of people sign up and then people, uh, cancel their res reservations for the workshop, this email will be sent. So there's a couple miscellaneous things that I want to get back to. Okay, under basic info, if you go all the way down, there's a drop down list for advanced settings. And um, the display start time and the display end time will generally be in the time zone that you set up when you set up your account. And if you wanted to change the time zone that this event was in, you could override it here, but United States, Indiana is where we are. When you go to your dashboard, um, up here is the privacy setting. This is to say if your event will be listed in Eventbrite, can people discover your event? And what this does is allow you to either make it so you have to know what the URL is. So if um, I just want to uh, invite my local alliance or a specific group of people I want to invite to come to this event, I can make this a private event. And then if I make it a public event, then all my options disappear. But as a private event, just anybody with a link can get it. So 
All right, so one more really important section, which is manage attendees. And this is where you create the emails that go out after they've registered and reminds them that their event's coming up. Now, by default, two days before the event, they'll get an email, two hours before the event, and then 10 minutes before the event. And this is where you want to include the, the Zoom link so that they can actually come into the Zoom. Um, some we you know request that they not put the link out until like you know two hours before the event. Personally, I think two days before the event is fine. And in my case, what I the way I've set it up, which again, check the Braver Angels website or check your organization's website, uh, you know, or, or, or requirements and, and see if you should be putting the link out in the registration message, the confirmation for the registration initially, uh, or not. So now I come down to manage attendees and um, the emails to att attendees is what I want to show you next, but it's, it's blocked out. But the first thing I'm going to try is to just go ahead and make my event live and see if that allows me to go back and then edit my uh, emails after the fact. And to change this from a draft and make it live, you go to the dashboard and click on make your event live. And it gives us an option to uh, make a Facebook event out of this. Now, if this is going to be a public event, uh, that would be a really great thing to do. Right now, um, I don't want to make it public, so we might create the Facebook event and link it to this later. So at the moment, I'm just going to close that. And it takes me and tells me that I'm now live. Um, it's up and running, and tickets are on sale. So we just made this event live and I've kept it at private for right now because I want to set up the emails that get sent when people register. Uh, and to do that, I was running into a little snag where uh, when this was still just a, dra a draft, it wasn't allowing me to get down to these options under manage attendees. So go to manage attendees and emails to attendees. And then two days before the event, they will get this email right here, two days before the event. If they register sooner than two days before the event, they're not going to get this email. So that's why I put the Zoom link in the registration confirmation email. And so since this is a copy of the, of the event, of the Eventbrite event that, that I did last month, um, one quirky little thing about Eventbrite that you need to be aware of is, is that it didn't necessarily copy everything that we needed in there. So if we go back and take a look at what it gave me for the copy, um, first, the bulk of the email itself is empty, right? So it's going to send us an empty email. And the other weird thing is, is that it did not even give me everything in the subject lines. And again, I recommend that you actually have all of the text that you're going to use for these emails kept in a separate document, keep it in a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever management you're going to do. And I've got a little custom database here. So I want to go ahead and fill out my subject to say everything I want it to say, um, which includes the date um, for me. Um, if I look at a previous message, um, that what goes in this box right here is actually starting down here. All right. And so this is what's going to show up from here. And Eventbrite added all this other stuff up here. And this is one reason why you want to make sure this is a registration event only, because if it wasn't and it thinks you need a ticket, it would have even more information. Um, another thing I want to note here is it says log into your Brent Eventbrite account ahead of time, but they don't really need to do that. They've got the email with the Zoom link in it. That's what's going to be down here. Um, so here's all the information they need in the email itself. And another little trick is that all the formatting I want to keep is in the HTML. So this looks like garbage right now. It looks like Greek. Um, but if I want to copy the HTML, I click that little HTML guy there. And here's the HTML source header. Now, if you don't know HTML, you do not want to be going in here and messing with this um, unless somebody gave it to you to cut and paste like I'm just doing now. And so at the bottom of this email, I've added this guy so that it knows that um, to ignore this little thing here that they don't have to log into their Eventbrite account. And since I copied this from a previous event, I want to make sure that the 
uh, event ID and the password are updated appropriately, you want to make sure that you've copied the right link. Remember, if I click into this link, I can go and click this little guy over here, and it shows me um, where I can actually paste in the link. And I, the rest of this is still the way I want it. It's the same as it was in my last event. And I can save this now. So since um, I added this and I made some format changes to this text, and I want the next time I, I uh, offer this event, I want to make sure that I copy this into my own document. Because remember, uh, Eventbrite did not copy the text here for me to edit uh in this email when i copy the event right event itself so i want to go into the html remember if you don't know html don't don't try to mess with this um click anywhere in there control a will select it all control c will copy it into the clipboard on windows i'll hit cancel in case i made a mistake and typed something i'll go back to my little document where i am keeping this kind of source it doesn't even matter it's saved go back to my document um, and i can click save all right now we want to send ourselves a test copy of this email okay and to do that so i'm going to go back into the two days before event Just click edit And then if we scroll down, we see our text box and there's this guy right here, which is send a text message. But below that is where you actually specify how soon before the event you're going to send the email. So, um, but right now I, I want to send this not to there because that'll send it to my colleagues too. And this is just a test and Eventbrite tells me that the test is sent. Okay. And now I can go pick it up in my email. So here's the email that it sent me, and this stuff at the top is all stuff that Eventbrite adds into this. And here begins where I actually told it what to say. Uh, there's the little note there that counter that kind of clarifies this little message here about logging into Eventbrite. They don't need to log into Eventbrite. Um, and then everything else, and I made the text darker by formatting and then cut and paste the HTML. And then again, like with the email that we did uh, for the registration, we want to check all our links. So we want to make sure these links are right. So um, coming down, this is the self-study that they have to do. Click that, make sure that it pulls up the self-study and where it needs to go. And there it is, and that's what they'll need to do. Come back here and uh, go back to my email. So now we have the email that they get from registration. And here we just specify the email they'll get two days before the event. Unless they register sooner than two days, then they don't get that. So we also want to specify an email they get two hours before the event with all the same information. So if I come back down to manage attendees and uh, emails to attendees, or just by saving this, it would take us back to the same place. We see that we have two other lines here, one that they get two hours before the, the event and then one they get 10 minutes before the event. All right, now this was copied from a previous event and it created the placeholder for these emails to me. But if I go into the editor for two hours before the event and then scroll down to where the actual email, we see that it's empty here and then the bulk of the email itself is not there. So again, I go back to my little cheat sheet of where I keep stuff like this. And I look for my entry that is for two hours before it. Um, in my case, I copied the HTML from the previous event, stashed it away in my own little thing. Come in here, say HTML, HTML, um, and then update this guy. Now, in my case, I have already gone ahead and uh, corrected all of this information. But again, you want to send a test. This is information that everybody needs and everybody's going to get this. So if we go back into the edit and we say send test, now it defaults to the email address for the account, which I don't want to do. I want to send it back to me here. Test has been sent. 
So there it is. There's all the stuff that it adds, that Eventbrite adds. Here's the actual email. Again, we should go and test all of these links, especially double checking the link for the uh, event itself. Last time I just said click here. Now we're two hours before the event, so I might as well give them the whole URL. Double check that the meeting ID and password are correct and everything else stays the same between workshops, so those are good. And we're done with that email. So I click save and it takes me back to the list and so now we have the two hours. Now we need to edit the 10 minutes before the event. Edit this guy. Once again, scroll down, double check the name and the reply email. Starting now, August 15th, right here. And again, we don't have the actual message that it was not copied for us when I copied this event. So once again, I go to my little cheat sheet. I go to the message for 10 minutes beforehand. And I have already edited this and am just copying the HTML. And if I paste this in here now, um, be very careful. I am not looking at the HTML editor and it's going to send all of this nasty looking code here. All right. So if I save this and sent my test, I would discover that I did not get it into the right place. So if I undo that, go HTML, it pulls up this little window. I can paste it. I can go update because I've already fixed everything. Um, go in here make sure it's the right link, the right meeting idea, the right password, and then that goes the same. Uh, again, you wanna send the test and check the one 10 minutes. Test sent. Now, interestingly enough, Eventbrite didn't add quite all the same stuff. It knows that we're 10 minutes from the event, um, and so in this case, it turns out that it's not saying I need to log in. And meaning I could probably go ahead and delete this little note here. Doesn't hurt to leave it, so I think I will. And again, you want to double check your links. And we are done, except for one thing, because I made this event private. Now for the moment, I'm still lining up my people and getting all the details for this, but I've got this set up ready to go and I can have people start registering by sending them the registration link directly. And to do that, I go to my dashboard. So we go into our dashboard, we scroll all the way down and it says your links and we can click on your event URL. Now, Theoretically, I would think that you click that, it copies it into the clipboard. Um, I'm uh, not doing that for me right now, so I'll just click that, select the whole thing, Control C in Windows to copy it. If I come over and just put that URL, lo and behold, the registration for our event for August 15 comes on up there. And the next thing to do then is going to be to actually test the registration. But um, one little trick that um, I've been experimenting with here, which is, is that you can edit the URL here. And what I'd like to do is, is I'm just gonna give it a shorter URL, skills for bridging the divide, and then something specific to our particular um, alliance here, so Bloomington, Indiana. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And now if I, copy that, it's the shorter URL, but it's a URL that I can actually reuse. And if I, for some reason, choose that I don't want to use that, I can edit this again and then just delete it and save. And then it'll just show the URL for the actual registration. Now, after they register, if they want to go and actually see the uh, information for the event itself, again, we can go there, we can right click, copy it into the clipboard. And if we go open this guy, you'll see everything that is on the online registration page. So now there's one more step. This is a really important step. You want to test the whole system. You want to go ahead and register 
yourself with an email that you can then track and make sure this all is working right. All right, so let's let's go step by step through the registration pro process here. If we come back to Eventbrite and we go to our events, here's my event that's published now. Uh, I can drop this down to go see past events or my other drafts, but this one is published. It is private for the moment. I will change that to public later. Um, if I go in and look at the actual event information, We start with the event title and some other general information here. The location is an online event, the date and the time. Uh, if we go down to the details, uh, we see the image we use, we see the description, learn about your political opposite uh, and the text that we put under, under that. If we compare that with what we have here, learn about your political opposites about this event is where this text box goes here. You can add more text, you can add images, you can add a video. Um, when we go register and we get, so when we go register and we get this screen, we can now look at the actual ticket information. We have one ticket type. If we go edit this information and check what it's saying, uh, we have our description. Okay, so we have our name, it says ending with Zoom. We have our quantity. Uh, we have some advanced settings here, which uh, is the minimum and the maximum order. And it's going to be relevant here. So we can only order one at a time because each and every person needs to register separately. Um, so we go register, it's a free event. And in the top section here, we can give it our name. This is the email for the registration we have now. So I'm gonna to have to go change that to Miles, Eddie, and my test email. And now down here uh, is where we have the custom questions. So for the skills workshop, we need to know if they lean politically red or blue and what their zip code is here. Um, but it's also gonna duplicate our information up here. So let's go take a look at that. If we come back to order options and the order form and scroll down. So each attendee we need this information from and this is the ticket that we created and we have information to collect. And so here we have our custom fields that we added. We wanted to know if they're red or blue. And then over here, it's asking for the name and their email address again. And if I come over and I say that we don't need their name, it gives me a warning that, that the first name, last name, and email address are required. However, it's already at the top of the screen. Why is it required at the bottom too? All we really want is, is the bottom here. Now, I noticed that before I did that, it actually defaulted this to the same name that I, that I had uh, and filled it out for me. Um, but in this case, uh, it's requiring this information and I can't actually turn this off. Um, but now I can come down and these are required fields. And I can say, you know, I'm blue or I'm red. I can say I'm other. Put in the zip code, 401, and click register. So now when we register, we get this as the thank you order page. And then if we wanted to customize this, we can go back into uh, order options, order confirmation, and then under order confirmations, um, we can actually put a custom message here. And below this is the email that it's going to have just sent me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just leave the, the confirmation message being that. If I click view online content, then this is the actual online event page information. All right, so here we have the live link that we specified. In my case, I went and uh, put the live streaming link as the link to the actual Zoom webinar. Um, I could give some other descriptive information there. 
uh, I can have text and I can add more text or add an image or embed a, 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 a video, uh, which I did. And right now that's all of this stuff here. And then the links at the very bottom are these link resources. I have two. One is for the self-training they need to complete and then for the link to the actual Zoom meeting. All of that is on the online event page. Now, if I go to my email, this is the email that we get after the registering. And it, uh, Eventbrite tacks on all this, this stuff at the top here. But under additional information, this is the information that, that we edited into the event registration itself. And to find that, you can go into order options and order confirmation. And if we scroll down, it's the customized email. And starting here, it says, thank you for registering. So if we go look at that email again, it says, and if we go to that email again, it starts actually there and says, thank you for registering. So there's a couple things that, that I like. First of all, I like to see a little space there. Um, so I'm gonna come in here and edit this and put a little space in that. Plus right now this text is all gray and I want it to be black so it sticks out. And so what I can do is, is I can just highlight everything up to my link and then change the color here to black. And I don't wanna do it with my link itself because I want that to show with the default color for links. So I can just go in and do this. Then when I have all of that done, I can grab the HTML because remember, I'm keeping a copy of all of this stuff. So I'll just click in there, select all with, um, select all with control A, um, copy it into the clipboard. So control A, control C to copy, cancel it. Cause I don't want to make, I want to make sure that I don't add anything weird in the HTML and then go back to my own little record keeping and put that registration back into my information here that I've edited. And if you're working with an organization, um, it's possible that uh, the HTML code with all of this formatting will be provided to you. And then you just go into HTML, uh, get rid of what's in there, copy what's in there and go update and um, and then go into the editor here and then change all the information, you know, with, with your date and whatnot. So that's an easy way to avoid having to know HTML and to get everything looking really, really, really nice. Make sure that you save settings after you make changes like that. And then technically we should go do another registration. All right, now that we have everything set up and everything tested out, we might want to change this from a private event to a public event so that Eventbrite will start letting people know that this event's going on. If you don't want that, if you want to make it so that only uh, people with the URL uh, are going to receive, be able to sign up for this, then we're done. Uh, otherwise, go back into your Eventbrite and pull up your events. And this guy right now is shown as private, so it will be hidden to everybody who does not have the registration URL. And if I click that, it will pull up the dashboard for this event. And over here is where we can change it from private to public. Ta-da! One more thing that you're probably going to want to do is as the event gets closer, you're going to want to export that list of events. And to do that, uh, you go to your events and I have the one published event, which we've been talking about. So I'll show you that if you wanted to see it from a past event, you just use this drop down here and go past and select that. Uh, from here though, you can just click uh, on the name of the event and it will pull up the event itself. From here, you want to go down to manage attendees and then attendee list. And two ways you can export this. One is just to download the PDF file. And this will create uh, a PDF file and show it in your browser here. So uh, if you do want that, you can just download from this and it'll put it onto your computer. 
However, a more useful way to do this will be to click on full attendee report right here. And this will give you a number of options here. Uh, I want to see everybody, so I just want to see a summary. Um, and I want it for this event. I've got my two people here, and then I can export it either as an Excel file or a CSV file, which is a comma delimited file. And usually most people can work with CVS files. Now that automatically downloaded it here and Excel will also work with those kinds of files directly. If we open this up, and we can see our order information here. So here's the first name, last name. Um, I want to note, point out again that since I registered twice, it's gonna have my email in here twice and it'll give a different order number for each person. So if you need an accurate number of how many people are actually attending your event, um, you're going to need to go and take a look and see about duplicate registrations. And you're done. You've got your event all set up. So I hope that's helpful. I know there's a lot of moving parts in there. And if you uh, are doing this for Braver Angels, then you might want to check the website, see if there's an updated video about this and maybe some of the actual HTML and the, uh, all the emails and you know, hopefully we'll be able to get everything and make this whole process a little bit easier than what you might have had to go, go through in this video to set this up on, under your, your, your own account. My name is Miles Eddy. I am operating as a heartfelt production. Uh, my story is an optimist path through cynicism, which is why I'm a volunteer with Braver Angels working on getting people to depolarize and actually have communications with each other. My phone number is 812-361-0067. Um, so love to connect with you. And my email is miles, M-I-L-E-S, at aheartfeltproduction.com. And there you go. I have another video on setting up MailChimp, using the free version of, of MailChimp for setting up landing pages. So uh, check that out if you need and stay tuned. We'll have a whole bunch more going for you here real soon. So thanks and make it a really good day out there. Bye.